Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, ethical guidance from Kabir, as well as an introduction to this path of Sant Mat spirituality. Today on this Satsang edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, my name is James Bean. It says in the Anurag Sagar, a classic spiritual text of the Sant tradition of India, call or time, limited mental perception, has entangled people in illusions to such an extent that they have totally forgotten their real home. This is from the Bijak of Kabir. Just as a coded document shows the way to a hidden treasure, just so this Bijak shows the way to realize the soul. It teaches such words to the soul, but there is seldom anyone to understand them. And this is from Songs of Kabir from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures. Death enshrouds the whole world, including all the superstitious wise men. Kabir says only those will be freed who find the path of love. Says Kabir, one after another, many births I took, many paths I followed to escape this relentless cycle. Only when I made my mind still did I obtain the state of lasting repose. A bit later on, we'll get to a book of Sant Mat ethics known as 1008 Kabir Vani, some selections from the ethical or ahimsa teachings of Guru Kabir. Before we get to that, some other sayings of Kabir. I begin with the story of ants in a burning log. Some teaching about ahimsa, compassion, and nonviolence. How Sant Dharamdas met his spiritual master, Guru Kabir. Dharmadas or Dharamdas was extremely devout and practiced all the rules of charity toward the poor and guests. One day Dharamdas arrived at Mathura on a tour of sacred places of bathing. After bathing in the river, he set about preparing his food. When he looked in the fire, he saw that an army of ants was desperately trying to escape from a burning log. He was filled with compassion and vowed not to eat the food. He put it on a plate and went out to find a suitable doni. Just then Kabir arrived in Mathura. Dharamdas offered the food to Kabir. Kabir told him, listen, merchant Dharamdas, when you were making this food, millions of ants were killed. Do you want to burden me with all this sin? As Kabir spoke, all the rice grains on the plate turned into ants and began to crawl back to the ground. Dharmdas then asked Kabir who he was. Kabir said, in this Kali Yuga age, my name is Kabir. I gave you a boon in a previous life. For this reason, I have come here to enlighten you. What a charming story about how Dharamdas met his spiritual master, a mysterious person by the name of Kabir. Kabir, being a very advanced soul of the heavenly realms, felt much compassion for the ants that had died in the fire being used by Dharmdas to cook his meal. 
Darmdas was a vegetarian and felt badly for the ants too, but didn't want the food to go to waste, so sought to donate his bad karma meal to somebody else. A little flawed, and yet seems like good intentions overall, right? Dharmadasa's name means person of dharma, or person of the law. Known for having strong moral rectitude, but this right morality fell short of the ideal of compassion for other living beings. This was used by Kabir to make his dramatic entrance into the life of Dharamdas. Dharamdas then asked Kabir who he was. Kabir said, in this Kali Yuga age, my name is Kabir. I gave you a boon in a previous life. For this reason, I have come here to enlighten you. In this present epoch of time, known as Kali Yuga, or the Iron Age, a son of Sat Purush, a son of the Supreme Being called Kabir, came to liberate souls. In a previous age, Kabir also was a spiritual master and had initiated many, including Dharmdas. In this incarnation, Dharmdas was picking up where he left off in his past life even reconnecting with his spiritual master again, Kabir. Dharamdas would eventually be known by many in India as Sant Dharamdas, a spiritual successor of Kabir. The first of many gurus in a lineage of Sant Mat masters associated with Kabir and Dharamdas. Kabir used Dharamdas to help enlighten many future generations of souls by working through Dharamdas, by working through Dharamdas and his successors, initiating millions into the meditation practice known as Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. So in this charming story of the ants in the log, Kabir makes his dramatic entry and also illustrates the ahimsa compassionate, peaceful, non-violent foundation of this path of the masters. The following are ethical requirements to qualify for initiation into Surat Shabad Yoga, the meditation of the inner light and sound, to be initiated by a living master into this meditation practice of Santmat. The ethical foundation of Santmat, ethical ahimsa values. One, abstinence from alcohol and drugs, all intoxicants. Two, ahimsa, non-violence in thought, word, and deed, including in the area of diet, as in following a vegan or a vegetarian diet. Abstinence from meat, fish, and eggs. As Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras said in his spiritual classic, the Ghat Ramayan, in Sant Mat, all masters have decried killing and the eating of meat. Number three, precept number three, leading a truthful life. Four, practicing non-stealing, in other words, an honest, ethical source of income. And five, loyalty to one's spouse. Those are the five precepts of Sant Mat. Seven key practices of Sant Mat. One, satsang, association with the masters, with the saints, which includes the study of their writings and scriptures. Two, selfless service of the spiritual master, or Siva. Three, love for God, also known as Bhakti. Four, moral rectitude, or ethics. Five, purity of heart. Six, Japa, the repetition of a divine name, sometimes referred to as Zikr, Simran, or manas jap, the repetition of God's name or names. 
And seven, dhyana or meditation. In the practice of meditation, both gross and subtle meditations are described. In the subtle meditation is meditation of the bindu point, the meditation of inner light, the yoga of vision. And nada sadhana, the meditation of the inner sound, also known as surat shabad yoga. Selections from the sayings of Guru Kabir from various sources. What use is prayer, penance, and worship when your heart loves another? Friend, tie yourself to God. You cannot meet God through wisdom alone. Toss aside greed and people-pleasing. Throw away lust, anger, and pride. Religious practices tie people down with self-pride. They all get together and worship a stone. Says Kabir, I have found God through devotion by becoming simple-hearted. I met God. Those are verses from Songs of Kabir in the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures. Says Kabir, search nearby, why go so far? Your soul wearied in the long search. You climbed the mountain. When you returned, you found God in your own house. You found God within your own body. Says Kabir, one after another, many births I took, many paths I followed to escape this relentless cycle. Only when I made my mind still did I obtain the state of lasting repose. Meditation will remove all your burdens. Meditation upon God's name will become your support. God is just behind our eyes at the third eye center. The following is from Baba Kehar Singh's commentary on the Anurag Sagar, volume three. God is just behind our eyes. How may we contact him? Emerging from Sach Khan, the true eternal timeless spiritual realm, the true eternal name or positive power is flowing down and is behind our eyes. How may we contact it? On the outside we meet the Satguru. We receive instruction from him or her about the Nam, the word, the sound. Withdraw our consciousness from toe to the eye level and merge our consciousness into the word or sound current which is resounding there behind the eyes at the third eye center. The third eye, the single eye, is considered to be the seat of the soul in the human body and serves as portal or gateway to the kingdom of the heavens or inner space, making it possible to access our spiritual senses of inner seeing and inner hearing. In Sant Mat, the path of the masters, the spiritual journey begins in meditation at the third eye center. Once again, Baba Kehar Singh from his commentary on the Anurag Sagar. When we receive initiation from a saint, practice Nam Simran to retrace our consciousness from toes to a spot behind the eyes at the third eye center. Only then is something accomplished. Another 
another verse from Songs of Kabir and the Adi Granth, translated into English by Nirmal Das. I was being crushed like seeds in an oil press, but the true guru, the Satguru, set me free. Love, old as all my births, flickered once again. Initiation and protection from above following the path of the Sants. Kabir Sahib said, if Nam or word given during initiation is manifested within and the light emanating from it is seen, then all ignorance goes and called the Lord of death and time cannot come near that soul. Since word manifested guru is the master of the whole creation. Till one hears the unstruck word or sound within, call in the form of a snake does not leave the soul. Caught in the illusions, the soul has forgotten its real home. It's difficult to escape from the powerful call. Nam or word is the only power to control him, just as a snake charmer controls a snake by reciting a mantra. Similarly, the word given by the master can control call. Nam is the remedy for all ailments. Kabir Sahib said, call cannot come near the power of the word and Simran Bhajan. If a person adopts a master and having faith in him gets himself initiated, does the meditation with devotion, then he can become a Hans, a pure soul. Such an attainment is priceless. His master, the personification of the word, will take him step by step to the thousand petaled lotus, Trikuti, Daswandwar, Banwar Gufa, Sach Khand, and after a short stay to Alak, Agam, and Anami Desh, which is the highest eternal region the ultimate abode. O Dharam Das, if a person gives up all doubts, meditates regularly on the Nam imparted by the Master, and behaves in the manner the saints behave and follows in their footsteps, that is, he listens to the sound current within himself, then he can tread the path of saints in search of the highest truth there is a sound current coming from the final abode and is calling you to come home. So if you listen to that call, then you can ascend like saints. More quotes and commentary from Baba Kehar Singh's commentary on the Anurag Sagar, Volume 2. Says Kabir, recognize me and manifest the Guru in the form of the sound current behind the eyes at the third eye center. Then you will have no doubts left. If you want to be free from anxiety, then catch the sound current. Whenever you are in trouble, sit down and do Simran. When you reach the state of concentration, then you are surrounded by a protective aura automatically. Another verse from the Baba Kehar Singh commentary on the Anurag Sagar. Simran, of course, refers to the repetition of sacred names. And Bhajan is meditating upon the inner sound or the ultimate true name or Nam, the name of God that repeats itself, that is a sound resounding in the heavens the sound current or audible life stream. 
It says in the Anurag Sagar, just as the lotus blooms after getting the light of the sun, in the same way the sufferings of the souls from ages and ages are finished after having the darshan or vision of Sat Purush, the true eternal being, the true eternal supreme being or God. Coming up next today on this Satsang edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, a Sant Mat Book of Ethics, 1008, Kabir Vani, one of the most important books of Kabir. of Sant Mat Ethics 1008, Kabir Vani, one of the most important books of Kabir. A great book to consult, 1008, Kabir Vani, selections from the Saki Granth of Kabir, a book of ethical precepts. I was very happy to notice recently at archive.org that this book has now been added to the Internet Archive, the library of the internet, the library of Alexandria 2.0 of the World Wide Web, so anyone can read it for free online. Scroll down to the notes section below if you're listening to this podcast by way of YouTube, and you'll have a link right to it. First of all, a book review, and then we'll delve into some of the sayings, some selections from 1008 Kabir Vani. 1008 Kabir Vani, Nectar of Truth and Knowledge, Essence of the Collection of Sakis, the Saki Granth of Guru Kabir, in simple language and style, translated into English. Its genres include ethics, genuine ethical foundation of spirituality, morality, principles, wisdom, Santmat, Kabir Panth, meditation, Bhakti, or Love and Devotion. This is one of the most important books of Kabir to have. 1008 Kabir Vani is a very beautiful and impressive book of ethics and wisdom featuring 1008 sayings of Kabir, one of India's greatest masters and poet mystics who lived in northern India around 600 years ago. As with Rumi, the Persian Sufi poet, in recent years Kabir has also become increasingly popular in the Western world. A few decades ago, the only translations of Kabir were Songs of Kabir by Rabindranath Tagore, published back in 1915, and another book called The Kabir Book by Robert Bly, published in 1971, and really based on Tagore's earlier translation work, Robert Bly provided some paraphrases or versions of Kabir. These days, however, there are literally hundreds of books available in the English language exploring the poetry and teachings of Sri Guru Kabir Sahib. The Sakis, a term for a certain kind of poetic composition, a couplet giving testimony to eternal truths, are often used in the Sat songs, the spiritual gatherings, in the name of eternal truth of many spiritual paths based in India. It makes a great deal of sense that the spiritual teachers would give satsang talks based upon the sakis of Kabir, a great satsang template, as they are brimming with wisdom about how to integrate spiritual principles into one's daily life. Kabir was critical of religious hypocrisy, going through the motions of outward rites and rituals without sincerity of heart. His path was that of bhakti, meaning love and devotion for the beloved Supreme Spirit. For Kabir, the true church, the true mosque, the true temple is within the body, within the human heart. The theme of the Sakis is 
bringing all levels of our existence more and more with each passing day in body, speech, emotions, and thought into harmony with the soul or spirit inside. Selections from 1008, Kabir Vani. We'll start at the beginning with the guru verification process. When people seek out a spiritual path, they look for a teacher. Kabir has some good advice about that examination or search process. Satguru Kabir warns everyone and says one should make someone his master or guru only after thorough verification about him. One should drink water only after having filtered it in order to save oneself from contamination. One who adopts a master without making proper verification about him has to remain continuing in the cycle of 84 modes of existence of living beings in this world, or in other words, transmigration. If someone makes someone his guru without any verification about him, and that guru happens to turn out to be false and cunning, how could that unqualified teacher bring fulfillment to the ultimate aim of his disciple's life? One of the Sakis of Guru Kabir, found in 1008, Kabir Vani. The Guru Verification Process. Says Kabir in the Ramaynis, I like that relative who prevents me from going into evil ways and guides me into the righteous path. He is wise who remains on the righteous path. He makes others search and never forgets himself. He is a false guru if he does not show the real path to his disciple. If the disciple gets the grace of the Sat Guru, then he will worship God. A passage from the Ramaynis, a section of the Bijak of Guru Kabir on the subject of the true master. Siva, serving, helping others during this life. The advantage of being in this human mode of existence lies in giving and serving only, i.e. helping others as much as possible, because possibly you will not get this human form again. This time you have been given this body, so do not hesitate. Serve others, and that is all. Another saying from the Sakis of Kabir, 1008, Kabir Vani. Love is like a deep sea. Only that lover of God who will dive into it fearlessly shall be able to get the pearl of ultimate happiness in it. And one who will not be able to muster up enough courage to dive in shall remain sitting at the beach. He will remain without love in this world. How will he get the pearls of ultimate happiness then? Living in this world for a short period is good, but instead of wasting one's life doing meaningless things, it is advisable to dedicate it to remembering God. What's the use of living for millions of years if one does not dedicate his time to self-introspection and remembering God, i.e., such life is a total waste, who will keep an account of it? My real happiness lies in the Supreme Self, and the rest in this world are nothing but distress. With one's mind, voice, and deeds, one should remember the Supreme Being with a pious heart. Kabir Sahib says, the essence of life is in remembering God. <music> K 
Kabir says, this mind is extremely restless and intoxicated. If I try to explain something to it, it feels bad about it and becomes sad. It does not like to observe the path, which may lead to self-realization. Just a note here, mind and call, the false god described in the teachings of Kabir, the call Naringen, is a kind of metaphor for mind, or the mind is part of the call and thinks it's the highest level of being and doesn't want to really give up control. So it resists meditating. And so there is presented in the teachings of the master this kind of struggle between the mind or call Naringen and the soul or spirit within to overcome the mind through meditation, to transcend mind, to transcend ego, to transcend the world of thought, worries and anxieties, and to transcend the world of the five senses. Kabir says the enemy is very powerful. There are five enemies, five sense organs, nose, ears, eyes, tongue, and skin. All these sensory organs make the being dance to the tunes in order to be able to enjoy different types of tastes. The mind surrenders before all sensory organs, but all these five sensory organs do not surrender before the mind. In whatever direction I see, I find a fire of desires. And whichever direction I run to safeguard myself against it, I get the feeling of its heat. The mind is like an intoxicated elephant. It needs goading with the goad of pure thoughts so that it gets rid of worldly desires and drinks the nectar of spiritual self-control. The imaginations of the mind are just as innumerable as the innumerable waves of the ocean. If somehow this mind can become quiet by itself, attainment of true knowledge, like a diamond, will become easily accessible. Everyone in this world is sad and restless because of lack of knowledge. This true knowledge can be attained only when the mind becomes quiet, says Guru Kabir. The mind is very unsteady. It is not the type that would remember God just like that. It will remember God only when it is poked with the goad of true knowledge, gnosis, direct experience. Kabir Sahib said, and then know for sure that this mind will not deviate and will engage itself in remembering God. Concentrate your mind and remember the Supreme Being without saying anything. Close the outside doors, i.e. quieten your senses and detach yourself from everything. Open the inside doors of your heart, i.e. open yourself internally and concentrate on meditating on God and remembering Him. Remembering God is the simplest. Remembering God is the simplest and easiest path, which has already been shown by the Satguru. With the help of this device, I remember God with each and every breath of mine. And I am sure this will enable me to see him, i.e. uttering the name of God continuously. Simply remembering God all the time is the easiest process of leading a spiritual life, which leads the devotee to his goal. You are remembering God in your heart. God resides in the same heart. You will get a huge store of true knowledge in this very heart, i.e. you will find God and his transcendental knowledge where you will find your Supreme Self. 
Devotion through remembering God brings every happiness to life and removes every distress of mind. Kabir Sahib says, remember God. It has a wonderfully powerful attraction. By continuously remembering God, a time comes when the devoted servant or devotee and the master or God become one. He attains self-realization. Says Kabir, utter the name of Ram. Utter the name of God continuously. Says Kabir, only devotees can understand the mystery of the fact that there is nothing compared to remembering God. There is a bliss remembering God for even a moment. But only those who practice it know it. Remembering God is so easy that, that one does not have to spend a single penny on it. In fact, one does not have to make any extra efforts to have the best results. It is a bliss remembering God even for a moment. But only those who practice it know it. Prayers found in 1008, Kabir Vani. O Supreme Being, I have become like you by remembering you all the time. There are no more self-conceits, attachments, and desires of the world in me. I sacrifice myself on the true knowledge of your name, remembering which enables me to see you all around. There is nothing that exists other than you. O oh, the eternal Ram of the temple of my heart, O oh, the eternal God of the temple of my heart, I lost my existence in remembering you continuously. I have become one with you. I exist not without you now. My mind does not wander about any more. I and you are now one. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these selections from the Saki Granth of Kabir, now translated in the book 1008, Kabir Vani. Hope you enjoyed the selections from the mystic poetry, the mystic verses of Guru Kabir, and that story about ants in a burning log, the mysterious figure known as Kabir, making his entrance into the life of his disciple Dharam Das. My name is James Bean. Spiritual Awakening Radio is heard every week at this time. The largest collection of archived shows, of course, is at YouTube, the Sant Mat Radhaswamy channel at YouTube. There is a growing collection at archive.org. And of course, this podcast is also available through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, etc. Most of the podcast venues these days. At the app or podcast website of your choice, just type in Spiritual Awakening Radio, Spiritual Awakening Radio James Bean or Sant Mat Satsang Podcast and you will find a collection of podcasts there. Visit my website, which also nowadays has an embedded player. You can hear the latest podcasts by just simply going to spiritualawakeningradio.com. At the website, there is a donate button, which takes you directly to my email address tethered to PayPal and a form you can fill out to donate on a one-time basis or a monthly basis at PayPal. You'll find a button to that on my website as well as a link to Blogger, my blog at WordPress, Daily Spiritual Quotes at Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. You can find me at Instagram under 
the name Sant-Mot-1, and other sites too online for daily spiritual quotes and links to the latest podcasts of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Once again, the website is spiritualawakeningradio.com. To get in touch with me, if you have any questions or comments, would like to correspond, my email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. I'll leave you with a couple of favorite verses of Kabir. I was being crushed like seeds in an oil press, but the true guru, the sat guru, set me free. Love old as all my births flickered once again. When we receive initiation from a saint, practice Nam Simran to retrace our consciousness from toes to a spot behind the eyes, the third eye center. Only then is something accomplished. Only then is something accomplished. Just as the lotus blooms after getting the light of the sun, in the same way the suffering of the souls from ages and ages are finished after having the darshan or vision of Sat Purush, the true eternal being or God. Mm -hmm.